Right, um, so the first vectors pack we did a while ago, um, but the first vectors pack has stuff about straight lines in it. So it's all about going straight lines, skew lines, points of intersection. We're going to use some of that stuff in this vectors two pack, but the majority of this vectors pack is concerned with equations of plane. Um, a plane, not a, uh, a plane in 3D is just a flat surface. Okay. So you can imagine that like the walls and the floor and the ceiling of this room are all planes in this 3D plane. So it's all flat. flat plane. This lesson, I'm going to go through three forms of an equation of a plane. One of them is used a lot more than the other one is supposed to do crop up every now and then. So um, I need to go. There's a bit of kind of justification here, which I'm not going to go into. Um, diagrams in 3D, they're always weird. But um, I might draw them sometimes, but they'll be, I'll do a lot of waving around. Um, so the first type of um, equation of a plane is what we call parametric form, or what we call vector form. And it's basically an extension of an equation of straight line. So you remember an equation of a straight line? Looks something like this. So you have r equals a point that it goes through plus lambda times some direction vector along that trip. We can do the same thing for a plane by adding in another direction vector. Okay. So the idea is that if you know a point on the plane, that's kind of where you're starting. In, you can describe any other point in that plane by going in two different directions now instead of just the one along a straight line. So um, like I could start here and I could describe how to get to the bin by going along two different direction vectors, multiples of those. Okay. There's basically an equation of straight lines with an extra one on the end. So a vector equation of a plane you can write as R still equals a point on the line. plus lambda times one direction vector, plus mu and another direction vector. Don't really need to understand kind of where it comes from, just know that this is an equation of a plane. So it's like an equation of a straight line, but with an extra plus mu times another direction. Good. Yes. What's R? R is just any point on the line, so we use it to stand for like X, Y, Z. Stand on the tube, Yeah, plane so. I put line on there, done. Point on the plane. Okay, so this is one type of equation of a plane. It's not used all that often, but we can get other equations of plane from this one. It's quite an easy one to do if you've got the right information. So first off, we've been given three points that go on uh, lie on this plane. Speak you and R. Now we've been asked to um, find an equation of plane that goes through those. So for this equation of plane, we need a point that goes through. So we can pick any of those three, and we need two direction vectors in the plane. So I'm going to work out some direction vectors between these two points, these three points. I'm going to do P, Q and P, R. But equally, you could have used Q, R as well, because that's the direction vector. In. P, Q is Q minus P, so 3, 1, 4, minus 1, minus 2, 0. Gives you 2, 3, 4. P, R is R minus P, second minus the first one. So you get minus one. We could use QR or the other way around. So these are two direction vectors that are in the plane. Now I can just write down the equation of the plane as one point that it goes through. So one minus two zero, or any of those is fine. Plus lambda times one of my direction vectors, so two, three, four. Plus mu times your other direction vector, which is minus one, one two. Okay. Maybe you quickly have a go at that, you try. So there are 
but multiple answers you could have for this one. So um, all you need is R equals yeah. one of the points on the line. So they've gone for P, you could have used any of those three. <laughs> plus lambda times one direction vector plus mu times another right direction vector. They've used P, Q and P, R. You equally could have used Q, R as well. And it would be a correct answer. So it's not a unique one. Right. So this one now says verify that the point P position vector lies on the plane with this parametric equation. So basically we're checking if this one is on this plane. Um, I'm going to replace R with this point four three five and then try and work out some lambda mu values and see if it works on that. So four three five plus two two minus one under one zero zero plus mu. Six. Um, now this one's not the best example because we've got a lot of zeros in this middle one, but we'll go with it anyway. So reading along the top, I've got four equals two plus lambda plus two mu. And then along the bottom two, I've got three equals two plus mu, and I've got five equals minus one plus six. Uh, and basically I need to um work out values for lambda and mu from some of these equations and check that they work in your book. Now you can obviously, we've got equations one, two and three. Equations two and three don't have the lambda in, so you can just work out mu straight away from these. So equation two, um, you minus the two across and you get mu equals one. Check with equation three. Well, if you add the one across, you get six equals six mu. So mu equals one. So those two are consistent. And then you can just work out what lambda is from the first one. Uh, so if I minus that two across, and if I sub in mu is one, I get two equals lambda plus two. So I get lambda equals zero. Ideally, what would happen is you'd work use two equations to work out values for lambda and mu and check that they work in the third one. Not worked out this way because there's loads of zeros in this, but that's that's the interesting. So you can say something like consistent. Uh, Four, three, five. Lies. If they were inconsistent, if you worked out different mu values, then it wouldn't work. It wouldn't line. Up. Yes, class. Now, this next equation of a plane is the one that is used the most commonly. I will kind of sort of justify where it comes from, but ultimately you just need to learn the formulas for it. But the idea behind this one, the thing I'm just making more complicated. Yeah. The idea behind this one is again, suppose you've got a plane and suppose you've got a starting point. So this point A is a point that you know in the plane. Okay. And this vector little thing. Any other vector um, that lies in the plane, any direction vector that lies in the plane, you can say is perpendicular to this normal vector up here. So this is a normal vector that's perpendicular to the plane. And literally any vector that you can draw, so A to here, A to here, A over here, will all be perpendicular to that normal vector. Okay, so that's the idea. Uh, ultimately, the, um, the equation of the plane is um, this, so r dot n equals a dot n, where a is a point in the plane, and n is your normal plane. Okay. So I vaguely justified it, but ultimately I just need you to learn that. R again, remember, is just X, Y, Z. Um, and, and like I say, your normal vector, that's a vector that's perpendicular to your plane. Sometimes you'll see it written as R dot M equals K, is just some scalar, which is what you've worked out when you've done A dot N. But this is the most useful thing to learn. What I was saying here is that um, any vector that you've got in the plane is perpendicular to n. So this vector here, this a to r, you can write as r minus a. You want to fill it in? 
this is perpendicular to N. Equals zero. So if it's perpendicular to N, you do the dot product and you get zero. So this is the form that it was on right and that you try. You can expand this out. It's fine for you to expand this out. So you can do R dot N minus A dot N equals zero. And then you take A dot N. And A dot N is a constant you can call it K. Yeah, but the important thing is what I've written in the book. All right, let's work out some um, our equation of science. So in this one, they've told us the point on the plane, 3, 5, minus 2. They've told us the normal vector is 1, 1, 1. So the equation of the plane, I'm going to do r dot n equals a dot n. n is 1, 1, 1. a is 3, 5, minus 2. Got to do with 1, 1, 1. And all I'm going to do is just work out the right hand side. So remember to do the dot product, you just multiply across and add them together. So I do three times one plus five times one plus minus two times one, which gives me the equation of the plane is r dot one 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 equals six. Right, the last type of equation of a plane is the Cartesian equation. The Cartesian just means x, y, uh, z in this case. Once you've got the scalar product form of a plane, it's easy to work out the Cartesian form because all you do is replace r with x, y, z. So from your normal form, so r dot n equals a dot n, if you call the point a1, a2, a3, if you call the normal vector a, b, c, uh, then if you swap in x, y, z instead of r, you get x, y, z dotted with a, b, c, a, 1, a, 2, a, 3, dotted with a, b, c. Okay, so from normal form, you just replace r with x, y, z, and then you do the scale of product multiplication. So you get ax plus b, y, plus c, z equals, um, I'm not going to do this some constant, I've put A in there. Sometimes this will be equal to zero. So more often than not, you will see this form of an equation of plane. So I've basically taken the K across and changed it. Through. So you'll see AX plus BY to C plus D equals So this example here, We've got given a point of the plane and we've got given the normal vector. So the easiest thing to do is to work out the scalar product forms of the plane. So add at n equal to um, n in this case is minus 4, 2, 1. A in this case is 2, 3, minus 5. Minus 3, minus 2. And at the same time, I'm going to swap r for x, y, z because actually it asks for the Cartesian form. That's what I'm going to get it from. So you scale the products on both sides of this. So x times minus 4, 2 times y, z times 1. And on the right hand side, that's equal to 2 times minus 4, so minus 8, plus 6, minus 5, which should be seven. Minus 4x plus 2y plus z. Equals minus seven, or you can bring the seven across and make it equal to zero. Either's either's fine. It then says investigate whether these two points lie in the plane. So all I'm going to do is substitute these coordinates in for left hand side. If I get minus seven, they lie in the plane. If I don't get minus seven, they don't lie in the plane. Minus four comes to by two times three. It's minus two, so that's something in P, that one. Is it minus 16, which is not equal to minus seven? So P doesn't lie in the plane, it's in contrast.
Yeah. So sub in Q, so three, two times five. Minus five, we get minus 12 plus then minus two, minus five, gives so me minus seven. That would be correct. So, in the Yeah. All right, so the normal vector is minus one, three, two. It goes to the point of one minus one, three. Now the second you try is worded a little bit weirdly. So um, it says the plane has this Cartesian equation. Write down the normal vector and the value of the it says minus a dot n. So um we're kind of working backwards to put this in r dot n equals a dot n form. Um, so we're doing um, r, which is x, y, z, dotted with 2 minus 3, 2. So this is your normal vector. And that's equal to a dot n, which is minus 10. Taken 10 across. But it wants the value of minus a dot n, so you just put d equals 10. It then says find a possible position back to A to represent the point A in the plane. So what you're saying here is that A dot N here must be equal to um, minus 10. You've just got to pick some numbers that work in here. So literally you could pick that A1 is 5, uh, minus 5, sorry, and the other one is 0. And so if 0, 0 would work. They've chosen minus 1, 2, minus 1. Um, you could have zero, zero, minus five, but we find anything that worked in there that gives you minus ten. It's just choosing some numbers away. Then, um, part three is something that I kind of skipped over a little bit. So it says write down the vector equation plane in the form r minus a dot n. So it is basically the same thing. So your n is normal vector, your a is a vector equation. What it's saying at the bottom there is that basically if you've got different planes with the same normal vectors or multiple of each other, then all parallel planes with the all perpendicular to the same normal length. But it says find the Cartesian equation of the plane which contains the point 0, 1, minus 4. And it says it's parallel to the plane r minus this vector here dotted with this sort of thing. So the second one is in the form r minus a dot n equals 0. So this bit that I've highlighted here, this is the normal vector. This is a point on the plane, but it's not the one that we're interested in. So to work out the Cartesian equation, we need a point that it goes through, and we need a normal vector to it, which we've got. So we can use the point in the question, the normal vector from here. And so I'm just going to use n dot n, a dot n. R I'm going to put in as x, y, z. N is 4 minus 5, 6. A is zero and minus one. And I've got four minus five six. And then just do these dot products and get the Cartesian equation. So you get four x minus five y plus six z. Do the dot products so zero times four is zero. Zero times five is five. Zero times four is six. Zero times four is eight. Zero times four is twenty four. And so the Cartesian equation is 4x minus 5y plus 6z equals minus 29. Or you could bring 29 across and it keep on zero. 